Hi, this is Dr. Scotty Butcher from the University of Saskatchewan School of Rehab Science, and this is just a little snippet of one of the lectures that I give on respiratory mechanics during exercise. Okay, so let's look at what happens during exercise. So this is the same volume time curve, but just expand it out a little bit. Now, we do have these maximums. So I'm going to put these yellow lines here to represent the maximum total lung capacity and residual volume, the, the lowest amount that you can get. And we're going to look at what happens during exercise. So at rest, we see our resting inspiration expiration that has a rate to it, but also a volume. Remember, the ventilation is volume but also you can see the frequency of these breaths are fairly far apart, which means we're breathing relatively slowly. At 50% of VO2 max, we would have an increase in tidal volume as well as respiratory rate, and you would see the volumes look like this. And then at 100% VO2 max, they would increase even further, and you would see an increase in tidal volume as well as another increase in respiratory rate. The interesting thing about this and the thing that I want you to pay attention to here is that it isn't just breathing in during exercise. You can actually see if we take this end expiratory lung volume, that end expiratory lung volume doesn't stay the same. So we don't just breathe in as we take in more air. We actually breathe in more and we breathe out more. So we see these end expiratory lung volumes expand and, and in, in inspiratory lung volumes expand in both directions. And this is a really crucial adaptation that we have during exercise that's very, very important um, that uh, in pathological situations uh, can, can actually not happen. So I'll go through those in a bit. Okay, so normal flow volume loop during exercise. Here's our resting loop. We get someone to start exercising, we would see that we would expand both tidal volume and the flow rate through an increase in respiratory rate in both directions. And so you see that this would happen um, as an increase in the resting circle. So the flow and the volume both get bigger. As exercise progresses, we see that continue. But if you start having a look at where we might be limited here, we can see that our exercise ventilation is getting very close to this maximum envelope on this side. And this is why the shape of this curve is very important. So once we start hitting maximal exercise, we can see that there is a potential for maybe having a limitation right at this point. Now, normally this doesn't happen. In people, the young, healthy individuals with uh, good lung capacity, we normally don't see an overlap of these values. They might come close, but usually not overlapped. Usually, there's room to move in both directions. End expiratory lung volume moves downwards, end and inspiratory lung volume moves up, but there's still lots of room to move here, so we could increase more here. And usually, we can increase by increasing the inspiratory flows faster, as well as the expiratory flows faster. So there's lots of room to move within this maximum envelope. So a key point to, uh, to illustrate here is on expiratory flow limitation. This is a key concept in terms of understanding what happens during exercise. So what we're looking at here is the same flow volume loop during exercise that we saw previously. It's just missing that uh, inspiratory loop down here. So it just doesn't have that big loop in the inspiration side. But what it does have is it does have that a real value of this expiratory loop. Um, where we see the peak expiratory flow followed by a downward curve. Now, the in this particular case, we see that the exercise ventilation is high enough that it's actually reaching or overlapping with the maximum loop. And we call this an expiratory flow limitation. Okay? There are some significant issues with this, and there's a, um, a really important phenomenon that happens when this happens. So, so I'm going to take a bit of time to explain this. So one of the ways that I usually explain this concept is saying that uh, we're, uh, let's say we're driving. Okay, So we're driving from, in our case, Saskatoon, and let's say we're going down to Regina for a football game. So we're going to start at this end inspiratory lung volume. And now we have to drive all the way down here to Regina to the end expiratory lung volume. Okay, so we we hit off on the highway, and if you know we might be going 120 kilometers an hour to start out with, but as in, inevitable in football season in Saskatchewan, we see that there's construction. 
So if there's construction, we have to slow that down from 120 to 60. So that's basically what we're seeing here is that we're increasing the flow rate or the speed of driving or breathing. And we start off, but then we hit construction for sometimes even in, in Saskatchewan in summer, it's about half of the time. So let's say we got partway there and then we had to slow down because of a limitation in our speed, right? We've been limited to 60. The same thing happens here. This loop has reached the maximum and we are limited in our velocity of breathing out. So what happens during exercise when we are forced to slow our breathing out? Two things. One is it takes longer to get there. So if we were to slow our expirations down and take longer, we could eventually get down to Regina for the football game. But if we only left a couple hours ahead of time, which is often the case, if we had to go slow for a significant portion of the drive, then we're not going to make it there. So what ends up happening is we're late. So if we slowed it down, we would be late for the game, which isn't an ideal situation. The other option is we get partway there. We realize that there's construction or a flow limitation, and we decide to turn around and turn back. And so if we uh, use the, the same analogy uh, for, for breathing, we would have a slowed expiration followed by not getting as much air out, okay? So if you think about what would happen during exercise in, in, in any individual, if you were near your peak ventilation or near your peak VO2 and someone asked you to breathe out with half of the velocity or to take twice the time to breathe out, it would be a very, very difficult thing to do. So what we often end up seeing is this second scenario where we would turn around and start going back so we would stop our expiration prior to really being at the point where we would want to be. So you can see that this would actually constrain tidal volume if we had a lower reduction in our end expiratory lung volume right to here. We compensate usually though, our body is really good at compensating and understanding the, the needs of the, of the body and so we would actually breathe in more in that case. So if we don't breathe out as much, we're actually going to breathe in a little bit more so that we're going to see the next breath would be at a slightly higher end expiratory and inspiratory lung volume. Okay, so we're going to see why that might be an, end up being a problem. So it would look sort of like this. Here's our previous graph looking at the exercise responses. And then let's say we take this same individual, but they get a lot fitter. We know that the lungs are the one tissue to not adapt to exercise, so they don't increase their, their capacity. But if we increase our fitness levels, we increase our cardiovascular capacity, our VO2 would go up. We do need to have a higher level of ventilation to support that. So we would start seeing more ventilation. And you can see right here is that we see this expiratory flow limitation. If this progresses, we increase our tidal volume by increasing the end inspiratory lung volume even more, but we actually lose some of the end expiratory lung volume to the point where we see that the inspiratory lung volume is getting very, very close to total lung capacity, and we're actually not able to breathe down and recruit all of this potential flow volume space because of the expiratory flow limitation. Okay, so this is what's termed a, a true mechanical ventilatory limitation.